Stage 15 starts here in Tisana Torinese, and it's unique for more than one reason. After 50 kilometres, midway up the Col de Mont Saint-Denis, the riders head across the border into France towards some truly iconic mountains, the only deviation from Italy on this year's route. The fact that it comes the day before the rest day means that the riders have absolutely no reason to hold back, so we should see some full-on racing, especially at the last climbs of the Col de Galibier, the highest mountaintop finish at this year's race. So we arrive into France, to the foot of the mythical climbs of the Col de Telegraph and Col de Galibier. The Galibier is a regular feature of the Tour de France. In fact, it's been used 31 times since 1947. 102 years after its first appearance in that race, it's being used for the first time ever in the Giro d'Italia. Approaching the Galibier from the northern side, as we're doing on this stage, it's 34.8 kilometres from the foot of the Telegraph to the top of the Galibier, which peaks at over 2,600 metres. Maximum gradient is 11%. On this bit here, I'm on 34 by 19, which is around about 16 kilometres per hour, somewhat less than the pros are going to be doing. About two thirds of the way up this cold to telegraph now, I've passed the steepest section of 11%. And actually, stage 16 starts at the top of this climb, descends back down. And that means that the riders and their entourage get to enjoy their rest day in the beautiful country of France. Except for maybe the Italians, probably won't be too pleased with the standard of their cappuccinos. Actually, I could do with one soon, especially if the weather stays like this. On the descent now between the Telegraph and the Galibier, it's not that long, it's not that technical, but it is quite fast. We're about 65 k's per hour at the moment. This really is a very hard finale for the stage. There might be two categorised climbs. It actually feels more like one because the descent between the Telegraph and the Galibier is just so short. I'm not expecting to see the breakaway make it to the finish today. I am expecting to see Vincenzo Nibli's team of Astana trying to wreak havoc, especially over the last 7.8 steep kilometres, which I'm about to hit now. Very hard to predict who's going to win the stage, but whoever it is will be super strong. And their name will be forever written into the history books of cycling. We're certainly not going at race pace up here. Rise themselves will be doing 20, possibly 25 kilometers per hour in these steadier gradients. But even here, we're starting to feel the effects of the reduced oxygen content up at around 1900 meters. It's precisely for this reason, stages like this, that Bradley Wiggins and Team Sky spent so long training at altitude on the island of Tenerife that they're better equipped to cope with these extremely high mountains. It looks like that's it for me today. The route's shut here at 2,000 metres. They are currently trying to clear the last 7.5 k's using a combination of snow plows and explosives. We're going to have to wait until May the 19th now to see what happens, but it's sure to be an epic stage. Well, I think stage 19 looks particularly exciting to watch on paper. It's only a short stage, I think it's just under 140 kilometres, but it goes over two climbs which peak at over two and a half thousand metres, the Gavia and then the Stelvio.